Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. Today we're going to be taking a swing at the new Boba Fett helmet as seen in Season 2 of The Mandalorian. Now the return of Boba Fett is one of my favorite things about the second season of The Mandalorian. And after Boba Fett gets his armor back and repaints it all, I think it just looks amazing. So I wanted to take a shot at making his clean armor, starting with the helmet. I'm also pretty tempted to do a full body costume of this armor version, so let me know if that's something you guys want to see in the comments. To make this helmet, we're going to be using some newer kind of techniques that I like to use, so I'll be showing you guys exactly what I do and how you can do the same. With all that said, let's get right into the build. So here's the 3D file we're going to be using today. You can find it on my website at galacticarmory.net. It is a full helmet split up into uh, individual pieces that should make printing a lot easier. See if we could see here, got all these details split out that should make painting and assembly a lot easier. And then, this is one of my favorite parts of this. This is the uh, antenna mechanism that allows the helmet or the rangefinder to pull up and then move down. And it's being held upward in the upward position so it doesn't move around while it's up there. So the first thing we need to do is get this thing in the slicer and get it ready for 3D printing. If you guys don't have access to a 3D printer, I also do sell the raw 3D prints of this helmet that we're going to be using today in my shop online. So check out the link in the description for that. Once we have this helmet printed out, we're going to have a nice base helmet to start with. We're going to need to do a bit of work to it though. So normally how I would start finishing a helmet is covering the entire thing in Bondo. And that works pretty well, but there are some shortcomings or things you have to watch out for. For example, you could inadvertently completely sand away all the Bondo, giving you very little progress, if any at all. So now what I like to do first is coat the entire helmet in some 3D printing SLA resin. Now this resin, it just starts off as a liquid, but when it comes into contact with UV rays, it'll harden. That's the premise behind SLA resin printing, but we're gonna be using it to finish an FDM print. Kind of uh, ironic, I don't know, but it works pretty well. So you can see me just brushing on this resin. It doesn't take a lot. In fact, we wanna do very light coats. We don't wanna cover up any of the details by applying too much of this resin. So, but we're just gonna give the entire helmet a good little one or two coats. The benefit of doing this instead of Bondo is that when this resin cures or hardens from the UV light, it is pretty uh, pretty hard, and so what that's going to give us is a nice base to work with that we can add Bondo to and Filler Primer to, but you won't accidentally sand too much away. It'll be very difficult to sand too much away, let's say. So what I use is a box filled with some UV lights, and I just rest the box over the helmet, and the UV lights in there will surround the helmet and cure that resin, making it hard and smoothing out the helmet a bit. Not perfectly smooth, but it actually works pretty well. If you don't have a box with UV lights or something like that, you could always use nature's solution and just let it sit in the sun for a day or two, making sure to rotate it, making sure that all the angles get appropriate amounts of UV light, but that is always an option. I did that for a few helmets and it worked out just fine. A quick safety note about using this resin, it is pretty toxic, so you wanna be sure and wear gloves. Don't touch this with your bare skin, don't let it touch your bare skin. And any excess resin, you don't wanna just throw away in the trash because it can be harmful to the environment. What I like to do is let my leftover resin just sit in the sun and harden. After it's completely hardened, it's totally uh, harmless. So once it's hardened from the sun, you can just toss it away. But don't toss away just the raw liquid resin. Okay, now that the resin's all cured, we're going to give the helmet a quick sand down with some 150 grit sandpaper, kind of medium coarseness. We just want to kind of flatten out some of the high spots on this resin, and we don't want to be too aggressive with our sanding here. Okay, now we're going to get back to some more familiar territory. We're going to be using some filler primer all over the helmet, give it a nice one or two coats. This is going to help us identify any spots that the resin didn't really smooth out very well, or there's still some layer lines showing, and it'll help us identify where we're going to need more Bondo or more filler primer, some areas that need more work. So we'll do two coats, waiting about 20 minutes between each coat, and then we'll be ready for the Bondo. So as you can see, there's still some pretty significant layer lines on the top of this helmet. So we're gonna be using a product called Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. The stuff is pre-mixed and when it's exposed to the air after a few hours, it'll harden enough that we'll be able to sand it smooth. Now you definitely wanna wear some gloves for this because it is pretty messy. I also wouldn't recommend doing it in jeans, but that was what I was wearing for the day, so I made it work. Wear a respirator for this and do this in a well-ventilated area because it is also pretty stinky. But we're just gonna go around the entire helmet, adding it in spots that need a little bit more work, spots that you can see the layer lines that have those horizontal markings on them. And then we're gonna let this Bondo cure for at least six hours. I'll usually let it sit overnight to completely harden. 
Okay, so now that the Bondo is fully cured, we're going to do some more sanding. This time with 120 grit, still with that medium coarseness. We're still just trying to fill in a majority of the lines. We're not too worried about the smoothness of the helmet right now. But I'm going to go around the entire helmet, just sanding it all down. Trying to sand it as smooth as possible. Now that resin underneath the Bondo and the filler primer, that's going to prevent us from sanding down too far and just erasing all our progress. So it's important to remember, we're not trying to sand away all the Bondo, we just want the helmet to be smooth. And so, this is more of a light sanding, I'm not trying, I'm not pressing too hard with it, we're just trying to fill in all those lines. So now I want to show you guys something interesting. And for that, we're going to need to take a look at some of the reference photos. Now I like to use this great site, a member of the community put it together, it's called howtoboba.com, it's got it's got all the reference images you could ever need from the episodes of the Season 2 Mandalorian that the new Boba Fett is in. It's got the damaged armor and then the fresh painted armor, and the site's great. I'll be sure and link it in the description. But if we take a closer look at his helmet here, we can see that there's kind of a texture to it. It's kind of dimpled, rough all around. It's not perfectly smooth. And so I needed to think of some way to try and replicate that. And what I eventually settled on was this truck bed coating. It's basically like a spray on rubber that's kind of thin, but it gives us that nice like speckled lumpy texture all the way around. You're going to see some test spots on the back of the helmet, but this is the stuff that I settled on for the finished helmet. It comes out pretty thick, so you want to be pretty hesitant with how much you're spraying. You definitely don't want to overdo it because it'll run. Just use short little bursts all the way around the helmet, giving it like one or two coats. I wouldn't do more than two. We're also going to avoid using it in any of the detail areas since those details need to fit together exactly. We don't want any kind of material getting in the way of their joins. So we're going to avoid the areas like around the ear, around the back where the little back detail slots in, but we're going to cover the entire rest of the helmet with this stuff. Finally, if we get a closer look at it, we can see that it replicates the little lumpy details actually pretty well. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Before we continue, I want to show you guys something funny that I came across while I was looking through the reference photos from uh, Chapter 16 of the Season 2 Mandalorian. You remember these two getting a little uh, spat at the beginning of the episode? Well, I want to show you something funny. So, we have Boba Fett in his normal fresh wear, fresh armor, and uh, we can see he's still wearing it, but if you look at his antenna, it is like completely bent backwards. I think that while they're wrestling each other, the helmet actually breaks. You can see his antenna is just pointing completely backwards. So I think that broke backwards while, when he got put in the headlock. We can see it's still in some more reference photos. Uh, here's a good one. You can see it's pointing backwards. And so what I think happened when they were shooting this is that they actually had to change helmets. Because if we look at the next reference photo, he is wearing the Cobb Vanth style helmet where it's all still really chipped like the paint isn't clean. You can see it's just a few shots here where that is definitely a different helmet. So I think they had to make a little switch midway through filming because they broke the original helmet. This is just something funny I saw when I was going through the photos and I thought you guys might get a kick out of that. Okay, back to the build. We've let this rubber sit for at least 24 hours to fully cure. Now what we're going to do is apply a little bit of silver in some places around the helmet. We're going to be painting over a majority of this silver but it's going to be a part of a technique that I like to do for some weathering. Now we're going to be using something called liquid latex. This is pretty straightforward. It's a liquid latex. Once we put some chips on it on the helmet, the latex is going to like solidify, turn into solid latex, but then we'll be able to paint over it, but then peel away the latex, revealing the silver underneath. It's going to make the helmet look really naturally weathered, like the paint has been chipped off revealing some of the Beskar silver underneath. So I've just got a little toothpick. I'm gonna to dip in this liquid latex and apply it to a few places of the helmet that have some of the silver showing, like around the dent in the top of the helmet, some pieces around the visor, just a few spots around the helmet and around the face. We don't wanna go overboard with this. It's pretty easy to do. So just remember that less is more. Okay, now it's time to paint the base helmet. And for that, we're gonna be using Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Hunter Green, kind of fitting. Hunter green for the bounty hunter, but we're gonna give the entire helmet a nice, good, solid, like one or two coats of this stuff, waiting about an hour between coats. Once the base green has finished drying, we're gonna tape off the rest of the area and get it ready for the red that is on the front faceplate and around the backside. You wanna be sure and wait at least like a couple days before applying tape over this paint because we want it to fully finish curing. Otherwise the sticky residue on the backside of the tape 
it's going to leave some marks on your paint. Okay, now it's time for the red. And for this, we're going to be using rust -Oleum Satin Colonial Red. Same deal as with the green, just go around the entire helmet, getting all the spots, doing one or two coats, so that it completely covers the green underneath. Okay, now it's time for the payoff from applying that liquid latex earlier. First thing we're going to need to do is take off all this tape. Be gentle not to pull it too hard so you rip up any paint. Just take it nice and gentle. But once we have all the tape off, we can start looking for areas where we applied the liquid latex. It should be a little bit bumpier than usual, but all you need to do to rub it off is just like gently either scratch it with your fingernail or use it with the fat of your finger to try and rub it off. What you should see underneath is the silver that we originally started with, and it's gonna make the helmet really look naturally weathered, naturally like the paint has chipped off, and this is a really easy way to get that look. Okay, now I'm gonna start adding the other accessories to the helmet so we have a more complete piece. I'm gonna be using some E6000 glue to glue the pieces to the main body of the helmet, and then use some clamps and some bungee cords to hold everything in place while the glue cures because it's gonna take at least 24 hours for this glue to fully cure. Okay, now it's time to start adding some more details to the helmet. And first we're gonna start with the kill stripes on the left side. There are a total of 18 orange stripes and interestingly enough, a single black stripe, presumably for when Boba escaped from certain death inside the stomach of the Sarlacc. I've just taped this area off and then cut out 18 rough rectangles with an X-Acto knife. We're gonna paint those in with orange and then cut out the last kill stripe and then paint it in with black. For the orange stripes, I'm using a Rust-Oleum Satin Fire Orange. I'm gonna go ahead and hand paint some of the detail colors on the ears, just because I wanted the extra control and I didn't wanna to have to tape off the entire helmet for just such a little piece. I forgot about this detail earlier, but the cheeks actually have an accent color, so I went with the Satin Hunt Club Green. It's a little bit darker than the rest of the helmet, just a different shade of green, but I've taped off the helmet and we're gonna give that a couple coats of paint. So now it's time to do some extra weathering. And with this, I'm gonna use an airbrush and an air compressor with some black paint in there to just kind of darken up some areas around the helmet, give it a little bit of wear, make it not so clean, but you definitely don't wanna overdo this step either. You don't wanna make your helmet entirely black instead of green. So just some light touches around some areas will go a long way. The last thing we need to do for this helmet is put in a visor. And for that, I'm gonna use a Hobart face shield. You can try and find these on Amazon or I got this one off cyberweld.com, but they're basically like a grinding shield it's a great visor, you can see out of it, but people can't see into it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna trace out a T-shape of the visor and the helmets, and then we're gonna cut it out of this grinding shield. Then what we're gonna do is use an epoxy steel stick to hold that visor in place. It's gonna fit really well inside the inner 3D print lines of the helmet. So it's gonna give a nice solid hold. Because this visor, it is flexible, but it's not totally flexible. It'll want to uh, bend back and straighten out because that's its natural form. But this steel stick, epoxy putty, is gonna do a great job at holding that visor in place so you don't have any troubles with it later on down the road. So there you go guys, that is how I made my own Boba Fett fresh helmet and how you can do it too. Remember to check out the links in the description to both the files and the raw 3D prints for this helmet. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making this helmet. It's gonna make a fine addition to my collection. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you guys again next time.